everyone, I'm Aratra Kabhomek and I welcome you to the third episode of the much-awaited Live Laws exclusive series titled 100 Important Supreme Court Judgments of 2022. If you haven't watched the first two episodes of this series, you can find the links to the videos in the description box below. You can also access all these judgments through the link given in the description box. So without further ado, let's begin. The Supreme Court of India in the case titled Jaswinder Singh through legal representatives versus Navjot Singh Sidhu enhanced the centre of Congress leader and former Indian cricket team member Navjot Singh Sidhu to one year imprisonment in a 1988 road rage accident in which a 65 year old resident called Gurnam Singh had died. A bench of Justices A.M. Khanvilkar and S.K. Call allowed the review petition preferred by the family of the victim against its 2018 verdict that had reduced the sentence of Sidhu to a sentence of fine of Rs 1,000 from three years imprisonment in this case. In a significant verdict, the Supreme Court in the case titled Union of India and another versus Mohit Minerals through director held that the recommendations of the GST Council are not binding on the Parliament and state legislatures. Though some of the recommendations of the GST Council are binding on the Union and state governments in relation to tax rate and taxable goods, etc. by virtue of the provisions of the GST Act, it cannot mean that all recommendations are binding on the Parliament as well as the state legislatures. The Supreme Court in the case titled Rashtra Shikshana Samiti Trust vs. Committee for Fixation of Fee Structure of Private Professional Colleges prohibited managements of private medical colleges from accepting payment of fees in cash. This is to avoid charging of capitation fee. The bench comprising Justices L. Nageshwar Rao and B. R. Gawai also agreed to the suggestion for setting up of a web portal under the supervision of the Supreme Court wherein any information about private medical colleges charging capitation fees can be furnished by the students. The Supreme Court in the case titled State of Himachal Pradesh vs Rajkumar held that the conditions of service of a public servant, including matters of promotion and seniority, are governed by the extant rules. The three-judge bench headed by Justice Uday Umesh Lalit overruled his judgment in the case of Vaivi Rangia vs J. Srinivasa Rao, which held that the appointments to the public posts that fell vacant prior to the amendment of the rules would be governed by the old rules and not by the amended rules. With a view to reduce the pendency of check bounce cases under Section 138 of the Negotiable Instruments Act, the Supreme Court in the case titled INRI Expeditious Trial of Cases under Section 138 of the NI Act directed the establishment of pilot courts presided over by retired judges in five districts of five states with the highest pendency, namely Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. A bench comprising Justices L. Nageshwar Rao, B. R. Gawai and S. Ravinder Bhatt passed the direction in the Suomoto case taken by the Supreme Court last year to deal with the pendency of check dishonor cases. In a notable judgment, the Supreme Court in the case titled SP Velumani versus Arapur Iyakam and other criticized the Madras High Court for adopting a sealed cover procedure by not sharing the copy of a preliminary inquiry report with a former minister in relation to a corruption case investigation. The judgment is also relevant for its discussion on the right of an accused to get copies of the materials under Section 207 of the CRPC and its connection with the right to a fair trial. Observing that death sentences are most often imposed by the trial courts in a retributive sense, the Supreme Court in the case titled Manoj and others was the state of Madhya Pradesh has issued a set of practical guidelines to ensure that the mitigating circumstances of the accused are properly considered at the trial stage itself. A bench comprising Justice Yu Yu Lalit, Justice S. Ravinder Bhatt and Justice Bela M. Trivedi noted that in most cases, the information relating to the mitigating circumstances are collected at the appellate stage and such information mostly relate 
to the post-conviction circumstances. A bench comprising Justices M. R. Shah and B. V. Nagaratna in the case titled Malaya Nanda Sethi vs. State of Orissa and others opined that the applications for appointment on compassionate ground ought to be decided in a time-bound manner and not beyond a period of six months from the date of submission of the completed applications. The Supreme Court was apprehensive that if the applications are not decided expeditiously, then the whole purpose of such appointments would be frustrated. Expressing concerns about the long pendency of applications under Section 11, Subsection 5 and Section 11, Subsection 6 of the Arbitration Conciliation Act, the Supreme Court in the case titled Shri Vishnu Constructions versus the Engineer in Chief Military Engineering Service and others issued directions for timely disposal of such matters. Asserting that the basic protection of human decency and dignity extends to sex workers, the Supreme Court in the case titled Buddhadev Karmaskar was the state of West Bengal and others directed that police should treat sex workers with dignity and should not abuse them verbally or physically. Further, the Supreme Court directed that media should not publish their pictures or reveal their identity while reporting rescue operations and stated that the offence of voyeurism under Section 354C of the Indian Penal Code should be enforced if media publishes the pictures of sex workers with their clients. The Press Council of India has also been directed to issue appropriate guidelines in this regard. Significantly, the court also issued directions to the unique identification authority of India to issue Aadhaar cards to sex workers without insisting on residence proof. In a significant order, the Supreme Court in the case titled in Re TN Godavarman Thirumalpar vs Union of India directed that each protected forest should have an eco-sensitive zone of one kilometer. The court further directed that no permanent structure will be allowed within the eco-sensitive zone. Mining within national wildlife sanctuary or national parks cannot be permitted if the existing eco-sensitive zone goes beyond one kilometer buffer zone or if any statutory instrument prescribes a higher limit, then such extended boundary shall prevail. A bench comprising Justices L. Nageshwar Rao, B. R. Gawai and Anuradha Bose passed these directions in the applications filed in this case. A bench comprising Justices A.K. Khanvilkar, Dinesh Maheshwari and C.T. Ravi Kumar dismissed the petition filed by Zakir Jafri seeking probe against the then Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi and other high state functionaries for alleged larger conspiracy behind the Gujarat 2002 riots. The court in this case titled Zakir Asan Jafri and another was the state of Gujarat observed that mere state failure or inaction during the riots cannot be a basis to infer criminal conspiracy. While upholding the SIT findings completely, the judgment made certain harsh remarks against the petitioners by saying that the petition was an attempt to keep the pot boiling and also said that the persons who had abused the process of court must be put in the dock. Following these remarks from the Supreme Court, the Gujarat police registered an FIR for alleged fabrication of evidence and arrested the co-petitioner Tista Setalwad and former Gujarat ADGP R.B. Srikumar. The Supreme Court in the case titled State Bank of India and another versus Dr. Vijay Malia sentenced the fugitive liquor baron to four months of imprisonment and also imposed a fine of Rs 2,000 for contempt of court. Malia was found guilty in 2017 for transferring USD 40 million to his children in violation of the orders passed in a case filed by a consortium of banks led by the State Bank of India. The Supreme Court significantly also directed Malia to deposit 40 million US dollars with 8% interest within four weeks with the concerned recovery officer, failing which attachment proceedings would be initiated against his properties. In a very important order from the standpoint of personal liberty, the Supreme Court in the case titled Satender Kumar Antil vs. Central Bureau of Investigation emphasized the importance of the rule bail over jail and issued a slew of guidelines to prevent unnecessary arrest and remand. 
the judgment in this particular case which is satendra kumar until versus cbi was delivered by a bench comprising justices sanjay kishan call and mm sundresh and the judgment acknowledged that jails in india are flooded with under trials the supreme court in the case titled abu salim versus state of maharashtra held that the sentence of life imprisonment imposed on abu salim in the 1993 bombay blast case has to be remitted upon the completion of 25 years from the date of his detention in portugal for extradition to india as the sovereign commitment made by the government of india to the republic of portugal at the time of extraditing salim to india was that his sentence will not exceed 25 years a bench comprising justice sanjay kishan call and mm sundresh directed that the union government is to place the necessary documents before the president of india within one month of completion of 25 years the bench also observed that the central government can itself consider remission in the said one month period upon completion of 25 years in terms of section 432 and 433 of the crpc The Supreme Court of India in the case title Bhola Kumar versus State of Chhattisgarh has directed the State of Chhattisgarh to pay rupees 7.5 lakhs as compensation to a rape victim who was kept in prison beyond the period of sentence. When a competent court upon conviction sentenced an accused and an appeal the sentence was modified upon confirmation of the conviction and then the appeal judgment had become final. the convict can be detained only up to the period to which he can be legally detained on the basis of the said appeal and judgment the bench comprising justices ajay rastogi and ct ravi kumar pertinently observed a supreme court bench comprising justices dinesh maheshwari and vikram nath in the case titled barun chandra thakur versus master bholu and another held that when the juvenile justice board does not comprise a practicing professional with a degree in child psychology or child psychiatry it would be obligated to take assistance of experienced psychologists or psychosocial workers or other experts under proviso to section 15 subsection 1 of the juvenile justice care and protection of children act of 2015 The Supreme Court in the case title Himanshu Kumar and others versus Union of India and others dismissed a writ petition filed in 2009 seeking an independent investigation into alleged extrajudicial killings of tribals in Chhattisgarh by security forces during the anti-Naxal operations with an exemplary cost of rupees 5 lakhs a bench comprising justices AM Khanwilkar and JB Pardewala delivered the judgment on the petition filed by one Himanshu Kumar and 12 others in 2009 the cost of rupees 5 lakhs is imposed on the first petitioner that is Himanshu Kumar who has been directed to deposit the same within 4 weeks before the Supreme Court Legal Services Committee failing which recovery steps will be taken against him the central government had not only opposed the plea but had also filed an application seeking perjury proceedings against the petitioners alleging that they were depicting the executions carried out by the naxals as done by security forces in a significant judgment the supreme court in the case titled x versus principal secretary health and family welfare department government of ncity of delhi declared that unmarried women are also entitled to seek abortion of pregnancy in the term of 20 to 24 weeks arising out of a consensual relationship the supreme court ruled that exclusion of unmarried women who conceive out of a live-in relationship from the medical termination of pregnancy rules is unconstitutional all women are entitled to a safe and legal abortion a bench led by justice dy chandrachur said noting that the 2021 amendment to the medical termination of pregnancy act does not make a distinction between married and unmarried women The judgment is also significant for holding that the meaning of rape must be held to include marital rape for the purpose of the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act and rules. 
This means that wives who conceive out of forcible sex by their husbands are also entitled to seek abortion. The judgment affirmed the consent of family or spouse is not required for a wife to seek termination of pregnancy. Another notable facet of the judgment it is, is its direction that in cases of teenage pregnancies, doctors need not disclose the identity of the minor victim to the police while reporting the crime under POXO. The Supreme Court passed this direction after noting that this condition of mandatory reporting might deter parents of the victim from seeking a safe and legal abortion out of fear of social stigma. The Supreme Court of India granted relief to fact-checker Muhammad Zubair in the case titled Muhammad Zubair vs. State of NCT of Delhi and others by granting bail to him in the six FIRs registered by the Uttar Pradesh police over a satirical tweet posted in 2018 after noting that the criminal justice system was relentlessly employed against him and that he was trapped in a vicious cycle of the criminal process. The bench led by Justice D.Y. Chandrachur further held that the bail conditions must be proportionate while refusing the UP police's request that he should be asked not to tweet while out on bail. Thank you, dear viewers. We will shortly come back with the last two episodes of this series. Stay tuned to Live Law for more such updates.